go. Right on. That's pretty cool. And where that's your next living history event. You tell me you made that. Is that working all right? It'll be a little tough to get it through, but yeah, once I got about three, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so instead of double, you'll kind of be triple on those two stitches, but that ain't going to hurt a thing. Extra Cheeto Cheetos? <laughs> Can't beat that. <clears throat> kind of as a point of reference, the general rule of thumb is whatever the distance you're stitching, you're going to need about four and a half to five times that much thread. That explains why I always run out. <laughs> <laughs> I was telling one of my buddies the other day, there's nothing more frustrating than getting within like an inch and you've got a slice. In my case, I think I'll do it like eight times. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to make it around here. And you may not. Again, you, you can make that longer. Um, it just is really cumbersome to me when you've got five or six feet up front. You can go ahead and kind of start doing that same thing and it'll soften up even a little more else on it until after it's stitched together as far as okay. uh, treatment, but that'll start to give it even more of that ease. That really changes the color, doesn't it? Doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Christmas. Mm -hmm. And again, sometimes I kind of go into panic mode and think, oh my god, there's no dye left in it. But, uh, <laughs> Once you get everything assembled and we start to put that treatment on the outside, the bear grease or maple or whatever you want to use, it'll darken up a little. Now is that just actually working that dye deeper into that leather? That's exactly what it's doing, yeah. And that's kind of why we put that oil on there as a first step. Um, just to keep it going. Yeah, exactly. Keep it moving. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you put that on just straight, you know, off the shelf yeah. or out of the FedEx box, veg tan leather it kind of stays on the surface a little more but that oil lets that really draw down into the hide i do that on that curly maple mm -hmm. do that same thing and that put tongue oil on there and draw yeah. that color into that wood you know absolutely trying to make a hat for my cat you know back in the 18th century but I'll uh, actually go back with a fine paintbrush, take a little bit of that dye mm -hmm. that we've already thinned down, and just kind of lightly go over those stitches. And I'd like, yeah, I like to have the stitches. That'll done. lose that white, new, you know, shiny look about it. Yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, and in honesty, it's not going to be quite the same Color. as the leather, oh, right? Yeah. Because it's pure white, and, right. but it definitely not soft and new. I like to say. Yeah, and again, it doesn't take much. A lot of times what I'll just do is kind of just quickly go over it, kind of random. You're, yeah. you're just, again, kind of knocking the white off of it. And then as it dries, it'll kind of the same way as the leather, it'll start to lighten up just a little and it'll really look kind of natural. I actually picked a little color up, just distressing it there. It mm -hmm. Grabbed a little off that leather. Yeah. Some good looking bags, guys. Get back. Sorry. You silly girl. <laughs> strip of oil tan there is going to be your piece that goes between the two panels. Your welt, in other words. So what I do is just kind of find the about the halfway point there, 
Okay. And just tuck that in. Now the and we'll talk a little bit more about this as we start getting everybody close here. The key when you're sewing these things together, you're gonna have three layers of leather. When you look at that outside edge, as you see Mike's bag here. You want those to be as flush as possible um, because if you get that weld in too far, when you go to punch your holes, it's going to kick in and then you're going to have a stitch that doesn't actually go through the weld or vice versa. It can work outside or inside. So that's basically the, the key to the whole thing and what's going to allow this thing to be so durable is to really try to line that up as best you can. And then when you start punching your holes or you make your your line where you want to punch the holes you want to make that about as far in from the edge as the middle of that weld so about half that distance of the weld or width of the weld is about how far in you want to come with your stitches okay and then how do we punch <clears throat> all three at the same time okay so we clip this together kind of sort of and right then do we do any of the holding stitches like we did last time? I don't. Okay. I literally just, just let use those clips. clamps okay. serve as that, okay. that kind of keeper and then just start, you know, like I mentioned before, yeah, with the pockets inches, about every yeah. two or three inches, punch your holes, stitch yeah. them together. Um, now, one other point here that I've learned that seems to help, I'm going to steal your punch here. Okay. If you can keep that perpendicular as best you can, you're going to end up with a lot stronger seam than if you've kind of got this one lean this way, this one, you want to, yeah, you want that at a nice perpendicular angle to your work surface, or in this case, the, the leather itself. Uh, it makes a huge difference in how easily it stitches, but then also the strength of the bag. So can we use that marker again to mark that edge? Mm -hmm. yeah, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and that's the easiest way to do it, is just take that weld. Yep, you're on the right track. I can see what you're thinking there. And just kind of... You want that to fall just about in the middle of that. So... Yeah, I'd probably tighten that up just a hair, maybe. Take it that way a little? Yep. I got a too far there. Pretty, that looks pretty good, yeah. Pretty good. Cinch it down good and tight. And, okay. Yeah, and again, you don't really need to cut a groove. You're just making right. that scratch so you can see where that stitch line is going to be. And this is the, the point where this thing is potentially going to last you and your kids and your neighbor's kids years and years is, is the way we assemble this thing is the pouch itself. Um, that pretty important stitch in there that we're about to do, so that's going to keep the integrity of the bag for years to come. Does it matter at all which half you sew? I mean, I'm doing my front is what I'm marking. Yeah, now if you'll notice that back is longer, taller, however you want to yeah. look at it. Um, so I always sew from the short side or the front side okay. down through the back. If this looks funny on the video, it's because this is a right-handed tool. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Ear of wisdom, if you will. The punches that you guys are using, you'll notice they say on there two millimeter. That's the distance between the center of those two prongs, which ends up being about five stitches per inch. Now, they make these a lot wider. They've got a four and a five, and if you ever see a lot of guys that throw these bags together and they have that much room in between those stitches, you really start to see those things stress out because you're only putting a stitch every you know, quarter of an inch, right. five sixteenths of an inch. Um, and then when you go to turn it as well, a lot of times you'll see the thread. Whereas what we're going to do here, you probably won't see a thread at all. Using that little bit tighter stitching. Okay, so you recommend starting your clamps down here at the bottom? I always put one down here in the bottom, yeah, okay. about halfway. And any... So that would go That's to the That's an interesting front. point. So, yeah, whatever you want to see, so you'll notice this has a rough side right. and a smooth side, just like your So your put the smooth side did. probably to the front of my pouch? You'll want to do it just like the back. So if you want to see that shiny side... Right. right, you'll put the shiny side facing this, just like you did. Just like I did. Does that okay. make sense? Yep. 
And I'm sometimes not. it's easier if you just put them back the other way, like it's actually going to be, and you can kind of visualize. Right. And you want all those flush on the outside edge. Yeah. And again, whatever side you want to start on, um, again, for me, that's always left to right. I don't know why necessarily, but so I would just throw one there and then just kind of roughly put one over here to hold this all together and out of your way. Up the other side, we'll put more clamps, less distance in between them. Okay. So that you keep everything nice and lined up. And then as you work around the piece stitching, you'll take a clamp off, put it back on. Okay. So about when do you put your next clamp? Um, if that's the side you're going to stitch on as a starting yep. point, yeah, I would put them about every two or three inches. Okay. And around that corner at the bottom, maybe even a little less than that. Okay. It's a little easier to hold together if you have more. Need them. So is all that making sense? I went through that kind of quick. Yeah. The, um, well, you're going to want face to face. So this is the back. This is the front. So that's how you're going to end up stitching them together. And then this obviously is going to go between those. You just want to take about half that distance and again clamp one um, over here for you. and you don't have to worry about having those perfectly aligned until you get close to where you're going to be punching the holes to actually do the stitching you want it to be pretty close but um, as far as lining up all three edges you'll really want to kind of focus on that as you start to punch the holes and work around now we can start that with no clamps on the other side. Is that all right, or is that dangerous? Um, it's not necessarily dangerous. What I find happens is that's going to come down and get in the way. So let me okay. Get a couple. I don't think they had these bounced around their cabin either. I wouldn't think so. No, that's kind of a modern convenience. The boy that handy. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> Work their weight in gold, I guess. Doing something like this, man. Those little clamps are. Yeah, for uh, ticket. I would say the first year, I never owned one of those. And um, knife sheets, especially big, thick, heavy knife sheets, without some kind of clamp, oh, it's, it's frustrating. And we want to be just about in the middle of that strap, right? Yeah. Okay. Well, this is going to be a really good time. Isn't it? Yeah, getting that back out of there can be a little tricky sometimes. Then do you hook the last hole to do your next hole, or do you jump, just eyeball your spacing? Do you do that, or do you do this? I do it either way. Okay. Sometimes I'll go down through there and mark them all first. So in other words, you're not actually pushing through the leather. Oh, okay. Put it in that hole, rock it a little bit, put it in the next one. But you can eyeball it that as long as you're getting pretty close. The important thing here is to try to stay as close to the middle of that right. round as you can. So I'm going to rotate that that way. And I can kind of see where I'm going. And if you remember when we did the pockets, how we started a couple holes down from the top, you'll want to do that same thing here so that you have those doubled up stitches on the tops of that pouch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Rubbed in pretty good um, on both sides, that inside. Um, Normally on those pockets, I'll just kind of get down in there, you know, about two or three inches maybe. You don't have to get every corner, every crevice, and then just everything that you see around there. I'll leave that there with you. What does the mean coil do? It softens it up a little bit more, kind of like the first application we did on that Neats foot oil, and then it also gives it a little bit of additional weatherproof. Okay.
Makes it into core tax. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> Those who have been on the ground floor of that little venture, right? Oh.